Hello. Hi, everyone. It is the next installment of our live feeding parties, and we have got the most amazing guest today, uh, Danielle Wicks, who is representing John Bede. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Kristen. Hi. Great to have you, Danielle. <laughs> Thank you. We are so glad to have you here. Um, we have so many questions for you, and then we are going to be hand nodding some uh, designs using Softlex feeding wire today, which uh, is super exciting because I have worked for Softlex for over 22 years and I did not know how to knot between beads with Softlex until I uh, met up with Danielle at a Beads of Courage event and she did a live demonstration of knotting between beads with thread and I thought to myself, that would totally work with Softlex. Why have I not tried it before? And in fact, I had seen this knotting technique before, but there was something about that particular day and that particular moment that it clicked. That I was yeah. like, oh, these two things could go together. And I haven't, I haven't tried that. Yeah, because I think Mike has done knotting or uh, with pearls and stuff years and years ago. He had but other people never... not. He had other people knot it for him. He for doesn't him. even do knotting like gotcha. that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, so I've never, and I know how to knot. Like I've showed people how to knot soft flex for those of, that wanted to learn how to do an eight knot, but I've never tried it in between beads the way that we're gonna do today. So very excited about that. Well, and you knot it all the time when you do macrame. I mean, mm -hmm. those are all knots too, um, but I had just never been able to get to the point where it was knotted between the beads and I felt satisfied with how it looked and how close the knot could get to the bead and the whole deal. So thank you, Danielle, for being that light bulb moment. <laughs> and, thank you. Uh, and I, um, I've been really excited. I was telling you earlier and, and Kristen was asking too, we're really excited just to learn more about you. And then of course your connection with John B. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got started beating? Oh gosh, so um, I got started with my beating um, quite a while ago, about um, 2005, 2006 or so. My friend Amy taught me how to do wire work and uh, some knotting and uh, at a local bead store in the town where I used to live. And so that's where it just all took off from there. And, um, you know, fast forward many, many years, I was, found myself at home with my kids and a lot more time. And so I started creating more and more pieces and connecting with more people and in the beading community. And I met a lot of wonderful people that um, I owe a lot of thanks to for getting me started and introducing me to people. And so. And yeah. where are you located? I'm in Seattle or just about 20 minutes away from the city, Seattle. Oh, what a beautiful place to live. And it's such a creative uh, space up there, too. I think it is. Yeah. It's a, there's a lot of artists in the community around here. Yeah, that's terrific. Um, so how are you connected to John B? Um, I got to um, go, go for work in, for John B in May of last year. I got to do some projects. And now I teach for them, for Michael Stores, and um, they hired me full time as a content creator. So I get to do projects for them, for their, you know, lines as well. And I have a great boss. I mean, it really couldn't be more awesome. Where <laughs> um, can people see and find those projects? Are they going up on their website? Are they um, in advertisements? How are they? How are they using your work? Um, lots of different places. Um, my boss, Carmi, keeps uh, the blog up to date. Um, and you can find it's blog.johnbead.com. You can find um, kind of a consolidation of all of our current work. So work I've done for for just John Bead and work I've done for Michael Stores are, will all be found there. Oh, that's wonderful. If you ever do projects with Softlex, make sure you shoot us an email because we can yeah. put it into our emails and on our blog and make sure we can share that um, with all of the customers that we have out there that love Softflex. Yeah, sure, I was gonna yeah. say we do, we do a weekly roundup um, every week. So at any point, we, you can always shoot us an email and we'll just drop it into our weekly roundup of something new for everyone to see. So that would be great. So we go way back with John B. And they're just a wonderful company. 
they've of course been around um, for three generations now. Um, and they're in Canada, Canada, they're up in Toronto. I've gotten to personally visit them a couple of times and they're wonderful hosts. They have a huge showroom um, that's just gorgeous and full of everything you could possibly imagine. And then they've got a great uh, website as well where people can order worldwide from them, right, Danielle? Yeah, yeah, including me. <laughs> <laughs> You're a customer as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, <laughs> for sure. I'm, I'm sure the employee discount comes in handy. <laughs> Yeah, no. Will work for beads is a hundred percent true. In many cases, it's totally true. It's totally true. Yeah, we know from our live sale experiences. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've caught a few of those. Those are amazing. Yeah, we do these live sales, and sometimes Kristen and I are both like, "We need so much of this stuff." Like, yeah, <laughs> set that one aside. <laughs> We just yeah. got some new beads in from um, from Gollum beads, and people are ready. All my coworkers are in there. I'm like, don't take them all. <laughs> They're for the next live sale. There's this particular <laughs> adorable I, Halloween pendant that everyone is buying, and I'm like, I only like fifteen of those. Don't. <laughs> It's it's dangerous and and I'm a little jealous that I'm not in the office because I don't see the items coming in. I sort of have to see it later, but it's probably a good thing. So yeah. that's not just so everybody knows. That's not the live sale happening tomorrow. That's the one yeah. happening in like three weeks for the Gollum beads. Tomorrow is a mic live sale, and that'll be at 12 p.m. Uh, Pacific time if you want to join us right here on the Softlux Company Facebook page. Uh, only. So um, we're really excited to to take a look at what is going on in our bead tables. So I'm going to bring those in and um, and then we can take a look. Let's see if we can move this here and you can kind of give us an idea of what you've been up to first, Danielle. And sure. I am going to drop let's see do we have one that doesn't have the logo over your face Kristen <laughs> oh yeah I'll find it I didn't even I wasn't even looking in that direction so yeah thank you <laughs> maybe the VIB gone too so we can see better there we go thank okay. you <laughs> all right so let us uh let us see what you've been up to and then I'll talk a little bit about what I've been up to as well Great, yeah. Um, I have been creating, you know, very classic knotted pieces um, using some check glass, ch sorry, check glass pearls. And those are the ones shown here. The colors are just really striking on these pearls. They're about um, eight millimeters in size. And they have a, um, just a really, it's easy to get the, um, the soft flex through, but internal hole diameters on these are quite good. And so I just kind of whipped this up and I love it. I think it's it came out really great. Um, I have another one here that I did with medium soft flex. And medium soft flex I found was a great match for gemstones with a, um, you know, a regular drill. And then a preciosa crystal, which is what mm -hmm. I'm using. And it that was just was great. Thanks. This was just having fun, just creating. And I tried some other things. Oh, we lost your sound for some reason. Oh, is it back yet? Yeah, there it oh, is. There. <laughs> Here it is. It just oh, sort of I got wonder... Oh, I must have covered up my camera. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Those look <laughs> really, right. really great. I'm gonna pop over to my camera so that we can um, take a look at this as well. Um, we are using all beads from John Beads today. For the most part, I think I have one here that's with our new check glass that just went up today. Um, but most of these are from John Bead. You can order them, I assume, on their website. And um, and so she sent me a ton of beads to work with, which was super exciting. because You know, it's nice to have a lot of options. And I pulled out, this is um, some Preciosa crystals in three different colors. 
and I um, I just did kind of an ombre necklace. So you can see to attach there to that tear cast ring at the top, I crimped and then added my first bead. And then I'm gonna show you how to make this knot that Danielle uh, taught me between each of the beads. And then you can change your bead color or do the same bead color, anything with a hole big enough to fit two wires. We're using the medium 019 today because a lot of the beads that um, that we have here are crystal and gemstone, which are very abrasive. And so it's a nice uh, idea that you could use soft flex with these because the bead isn't going to cut through the thread or cord like it would with a traditional uh, cording. And so it not only gives you that fun hand knotted look, but also gives you that strength and durability um, for long term, because you're using a stainless steel beading wire. It comes in lots of different colors too. So I think we have at least 22 colors at this point. I haven't counted them recently. Um, so lots of color options. And then that fun color can really play a part of your design. I just did this one on uh, Instagram Reels. So it's a real fast forward version. So it'll be a little hard to see every step, but you can see how that turquoise can really make a difference in this really light colored fluorite check glass bead and bring out that color. That is really fun. I'm so excited to see you and Danielle do these today. We have, um, we have Christine saying, I feel like knotting is way harder than you'd think. And in some cases, I think it can be like getting it right in between the beads feels like it's a little bit tougher. So I'm excited to see how you this two is so easy. It out. <laughs> you guys, I started this at two o'clock. I think it was about maybe even two o five. And I knew I had to meet Danielle at two thirty. I made an Instagram reel and made this entire bracelet and posted it by two twenty seven. That's how fast it went. Wow. It's really easy. Um, I also used some of these gorgeous, I think these are adventurine. Yeah. Peach uh, adventurine from uh, John Bead. And in this case, I used the antique brass. So we have some really lovely like brass and copper bone, some really neutral tones. If you prefer those colors kind of peeking out between your beads. That might be a really good um, good option for you as well. So one I thing I wanted option. to notice before I get going is how nicely these drape. They're a nice round circle. And um, part of that is a technique that I'm gonna show you that I didn't do as much on the blue necklace. So even though this kind of drapes nicely because there's a lot of weight, I think, I didn't use this technique that I'm going to show you. So in some places, you can see it has a little bit more of a wave. And so I'm excited to give you this really fantastic tip. So I'm thinking about using um, this aquamarine. I'm going to start a bracelet, and then Danielle has one ready that she can finish on her end. Does that sound good, Danielle? Sounds great, yeah. All right, I'm going to pop this open. These are these are John Bead Earth's Jewels, and they are a 16 inch, eight millimeter round aquamarine um, in this strand. And I assume you can probably find these right on their website if you want some or something similar. Yep, I believe they're there currently. So I'm looking at using the dark blue. I think that'll pop really nicely with this really soft blue. Um, but you could definitely use a lot of different colors depending on what you're going for. I bet the purple would be really pretty, either the copper or the brass. And then this is just a small amount of the colors soft looks carries. We have lots and lots of colors. So I'm gonna pull my wire out. Um, this is a 10 foot spool of softlex in the medium 0.01 inch diameter. This is our 49 strand uh, stainless steel beading wire. And um, we're using medium not just because it's great for the abrasive 
qualities in these beads, but also because it comes in the biggest color assortment. So you have a lot more color options in medium than you would in the fine or the very fine, although you could use those too, just to be clear. I'm gonna do about four feet. That's probably more than I need. How much do you usually do for a bracelet, Danielle? I was cutting double the length that I wanted my bracelet to become. Oh, wow. Um, but I was just being careful because I know that knotting can, can really gobble up cord. Right, that's my worry. I'm still kind of working out those those fine details. Let me grab a cloud. Come back here. Why don't we do one of these lovely lips clasps? Mm -hmm. Danielle, um, Ida is asking, does John beat available at Michael's? Yes, um, at the moment, seed beats. Um, we have a lot of seed beads. The ones that were behind me um, earlier when, when we had the um, the other camera up are all available at Michael's stores. All these. Awesome. <laughs> I know they look so pretty behind you. Oh, what thanks. a nice backdrop. Okay. What an awesome one. display. Yeah. Awesome. And, then, um, and that's at every Michael's or most Michael's. Yes, um, every single Michaels will have these. Um, and we also have beads at Joann's Craft Stores and lots of other bead retailers um, all across uh, North America and I believe even worldwide. So, awesome. That's yeah. Terrific. Okay, so I strung my clasp to the center of my wire. And then I'm going to take my two ends and I'm going to string a two by two millimeter Softlex crimp tube onto my wire and then I'm gonna go all the way to the center and attach there. I'm leaving a little bit of room so this can wiggle around. I've got my wires side by side inside of my crimp tube. Danielle, you told me you're having problems with your magical crimpers. What is going on with them? Um, I think it's user error. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tempted to master the technique myself, but mine never look as good as yours. Mine look kind of um, uh, mangled. <laughs> oh no. All right. Well, maybe this will help. So I center my crimp tube and it's really important that it's centered on that first pass, which is always the hardest part um, for people to get it right in the middle there. And even the hardest part for me, sometimes I miss that centered place where it fits really nicely. But if you do get it in the center, you'll get what look, looks like a little four corner ravioli. And then you can turn it on its side and put it in that same little center section. Again, centering it, because now you're gonna compress in the four corners. And then you just go around and around it, tightening it down into a little round, but very strong bead. Okay, then I can take both wires and string it through my beautiful gemstone bead. I love how these gemstones have such big holes. So many gemstones out there are so tricky with their hole sizes. So this is really wonderful to see that John Bead is supplying uh, gemstones with such lovely sized holes. Yeah, and they're consistent, I think, too, right? Which makes such a difference. They yes. do seem extremely consistent, which is yeah. really, really lovely. Okay, so I've got my two wires. I'm gonna bring my bead all the way down to my finding. I'm just gonna move a few things out of the way here. I don't know why I'm so overloaded <laughs> with things, <laughs> but I am. Okay, so then I take my um, two fingers and I just do a wrap around them and then just pull the two wires through. What kind of a knot is this, um, Danielle? Is it just an overhand knot? Um, I wanna call it an overhand knot, yeah. Mm -hmm. An overhand knot. So then I'm gonna slip my tweezer inside. This is how I'm doing it. Danielle's gonna show us how she's doing it. So it may be a little bit different. We've been practicing on our own separately I have been taking my knot and just kind of letting it slide behind the tweezer here. 
so that I can get it up close to my bead, but not perfectly knotted. You know, and I'll even um, pull it out with it a little unknotted. And then I wrap my hands around my two soft flex sides and I give it a nice tug. Oh, how about? And that tugs that knot right next to the bead. And then one last thing I do, and this is hardest on the first one, it gets easier, is I tug back on my bead toward the knot. And that's that extra tip that makes it more flexible because then the bead can move back and forth just a little bit. And it makes it so that it, it doesn't, um, it doesn't, it's not so tight that it loses its flexibility. So same with this one. I tugged every bead back at the knot before so going on to the next one. You took the bead and you just tugged it back towards the knot. Okay. Exactly. And then I go on to the next one. So I just string my bead with both wires. So Marisol is saying that her crimps always look like they've been gnawed by <laughs> not on my <laughs> Oh no. A chup of cups. I am not gonna say Cabra. <laughs> <Chupacabra. laughs> oh Marisol, what is going on over there? <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap around, bring my wire through for my overhand knot, and then I kind of just hold it up, grab, and you wanna make sure you get that tweezer right next to your bead, right in there, um, because sometimes you'll, you'll, you may even find you'll leave space between the bead and the knot if you don't tug it up nice and tight. I had that happen on one, and then it's disappointing when you realize later there's a big gap. So get in as close as you can, kind of tighten it down, right up next to it, and then you just take your two hands and pull. This is stainless steel wire. It's very strong, extremely strong. So you want to really just yank on it and then pull back with your bead so that you can make that little bit of wiggle room so they'll lay really nicely. Awesome. All right. So Thomas, is, Thomas is sharing a little tip. Um, for everyone that, you know, if you are using the magical crimper and you find that you sometimes get it to work well and sometimes don't, pay attention to the way you're holding your pliers because I have found when I hold my pliers in one direction versus the other, I, I just seem to work better for me. So, um, so just pay attention to that while you're practicing. If you're getting a good one and then a not good one and then a good one and a not good one, are you picking up your pliers and holding them differently each time or uh, try, and, try and get it the same way? And there we go. Look at how nice those knots look between the beads. They're nice and tight up against the bead, but there's still some flexibility for those beads to move around so that it drapes nicely. Fun. Sarah, Kimberly is asking, can you do fancy knots too or just the overhand knot? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by fancy knots, Kimberly, but we do do macrame knots with soft flex, if that's part of what you're saying. Yeah, you can knot it in all sorts of different kinds of ways. I think it's just, it's important to recognize that it's a stainless steel beading wire. So it may not react the same way as a thread or cord and plan for that and adjust. But we also have a macrame playlist on our YouTube channel that you can check out. All right, Danielle, do you wanna finish off your design? And I'll keep working on this one too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, I love that tip that you shared about pulling back on the, uh, the bead that is below the last knot, right? I yeah, think I think that helps. I didn't do that on this one. And what you'll see here is, um, you know, it's still beautiful, but it does have a little bit of a wave to it. But then mm -hmm. uh, I got it right on my second attempt for for, uh, for today after hearing your tip. I think I was, oh, good. Yeah. Ooh, and this that's just, really fun to yeah. see that on a natural shape too. That was where I, I was very excited to see this one because they um, this design needed to be knotted because of the way they you know, it's not a uniform bead at all. And so it's just a cool look. 
came out really nice and uh, I was really excited about this one. Yeah, I really love that. It's beautiful. And, and you're using uh, crimpers on the ends as well, right? Just a different I, kind of crimper. Uh, yeah, actually I'm using, I am using these. Um, and then these were just the same, oh, same ones in copper. Mm -hmm. And what I did is uh, I just did a regular crimp. So, um, okay. you know, the yeah. fold over way. Awesome. Show us on your design that's still open so we can see. Yeah, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to get out a crimp or lots of crimps. <laughs> Let me try to put those back in there. And um, the way that I, so um, if you guys remember when we started, we didn't do a knot before our crimp at the beginning. So I want to match what I did on the other side. So I slid on a bead. And instead of doing a knot up here, I'm just going to go right into the crimp. And just bringing that down. And I'm going to take one of these strands, um, not both of them, but just one, and go back down through the crimp bead. And then I try to go through my bead as well. And I trim on the other side of my bead. And it's just a style thing. I think you could do either in OB. It would be just fine. Pull that up a little bit. Okay, I'm bringing that down. Okay, and so I've got a loop here, and my crimp's as close to the bead as I can get it. I'm holding on to this strand that's still long. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to make that loop a little smaller. And I'm going to go ahead and crimp that. And these are crimping pliers that you can find from John Bead on their website. I'm assuming. Yes, yeah, and there's also, um, uh, someone asked where they could get those blue crystals earlier. You can, I believe those are at Art Beads right now. Um, oh, from Art Beads? Yeah, so. they have all, all the Preciosa crystal. Oh, okay. From us. Uh, oh, good. We love Art Beads. Art Beads also carries Softlex beading wires. So that's a great place if you need to pick up your Preciosa crystal and you're matching Softlex. It sounds like that's a great place to do it. For sure, yeah. And so, so I trimmed my one that was sticking up here and I'm coming over here to where this one's sticking out underneath the bead here and just gonna trim that. And then all you need to do is put your jump ring and your closure on, which I kind of made a little wrap loop earlier with the smaller crystal. And up here, I've got my lobster claw on there. Yeah. Very nice. So I'm, so I'm curious. Cool. I saw that Sarah had um, wires doubled up. So it was like two. Do you also have two on that or is it one? I have two wires running through. And I can okay. start a new one if you'd like to. I can show how I did it from the beginning. Yeah, um, do you please. Yeah. Okay. I was, just I was having a really fun time. time. Just kind of playing. I might be doing it differently, though. I, I'm not 100% sure if I'm doing it the same way. Oh, um, that's totally okay. I mean, I think any way you can not soft flex, we'd like to show it, and then people can decide what makes the best fit for them. Oh, cool, awesome. Yeah, I hope I hope it's um, you know, I feel like it's similar. I watched you do the start of yours, and I believe I'm doing the same thing to start. Okay. And so what I did is I cut this long. This is um, really what I did is I cut two mats lengths. Um, so I think that's probably something near 20 inches or so. It's I wanted to have extra room to be able to move in for my crimp and do lots of good knots. So I'm just putting the crimp here on the end. It's, it's folded at the midpoint here. And I'm putting the crimp bead on. I'm just sliding it all the way down. And I could have attached my clasp at this point, but I'll probably come back later and just jump ring onto it. And making a little small loop there, make sure I'm not crossing inside there. And um, just gonna crimp that down. All right. And I'm gonna grab a bead. Let's use these ones. These are a, um, a natural agate and kind of really beautiful red and earth color. And I'm using that with the, I'm not sure if I showed this earlier. This is the antique brass color metallic. 
Beautiful. Great combo. So gorgeous. I'm really in love with the metallics. Those those have my heart. <laughs> and yeah, so they I love pretty. those too. They're so pretty. So I just did that. Um, I think that's kind of the same thing, except for I didn't do the, the gorgeous ravioli crimp, which I will master that, I promise. I'm, I wasn't bringing it to live today. I, I tried it. I tried it. I think I've met my nemesis, so I'm going to need <laughs> I was watching, Sarah, I was watching all your videos and everything, and I was like, oh, man. What is <laughs> going <trying>. on? <laughs> you know, everyone has, like, their own little tips they find. Our friend Mile, mm -hmm. he finds he likes three wires running through the crimp tube, so he actually will add a little dummy strand so that there's three going through, and he has found that, for some reason, that makes it work really well for him. So... <laughs> <laughs> That's Who so knows? Neat. Now I need to go watch one of his tutorials so I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's we'll so be cool. using a ton of silver silk if you do. So I yeah, been right? it's so pretty. <laughs> He's oh, very inspiring. He really is. Yeah. So I've got um, you know, I've got the gemstone on there. I did just an overhand knot, just uh, pulled that through, and then I just go through the loop. And I just pinch both of the strands above the gemstone, close as I can get to it. And this is exactly the way um, that you were doing it too, I believe. And yep, just that's it. Tight. Whoops, sorry about that. Ooh, pulled a little too tight. So you pull that all the way down towards the um, tip of your tweezers. Yes, yeah. And then I um, move the knot as close as I can. And once I get it there, I do pull the strands apart and just like Sarah was doing, yeah, I like that. I that's a, a neat little way to get that night nice and taut, not, not nice and tight. <laughs> Tongue twister. Exactly. And if I put um, a class on, it would be easier for me to do that pullback method. But I'm gonna throw another bead on really quick. I was spending more time trying to get the knot close to the bead, and then I just realized that it didn't matter that as long as I got the knot pretty close to the bead and then I gave it a good tug on both ends, that it just like slid right into that bead without a lot of fuss, which was nice. Cause that made it like, oh, I can make this super fast. Um, that might make it more flowy too. I was thinking that might yeah. be the, the, the ticket for making Part it. Part of the trick, yeah. That I'm not doing it so tight, maybe. And let's it bend a little bit. So we've got Marisol says that now she wants to knot everything to knot. I know, me too. That is the question. Hey, Marisol. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, when I found this, how long ago was that? Like two months ago, Danielle? It was, she I was, was so alive. excited. So she started to see a picture and she was like really, really excited about it. I was so <laughs> excited, but we had our customer appreciate. We had, I think it was even before summer GBE or something. I think it was too. Yeah, I think oh my it was. God. It was like May and I was like, there was GBE, there was customer appreciation week. I was like, I cannot do this justice if I just rush in and try to do this when there's all these events going on. So we planned this so long ago and I had kind of put it on the back burner. And then this week I've been like, oh yes, it is knotting time. I'm gonna <laughs> knot everything <laughs> that comes near me in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> It's like, put a bird on it. I could not that. I could not that. Uh -huh. Anything. <laughs> Anything the squire goes through twice, it's knotted. I know, exactly. <laughs> so Kimberly is saying that, yeah, she's tried macrame with softlex and loves it, but wondered about barrel knots. And I know our good friend Kelly over at Kelly's Beauty oh. Boutique does a lot of barrel knots. Um, I haven't had a chance to try it out yet. I've been wanting to, so it's on my list of things to try. But I would think you can do it, Kimberly. I just have not given it a go yet. Strangely yeah. enough, as much as I've seen Kelly, uh, Kelly's videos, I somehow always miss her barrel knot demonstration. So I've yet to see it like 
Uh, I bet it is because everyone goes on and on about it. Um, but I need to catch one of those to see if it, I feel like that's something that could work with Softlex too. I'd be curious to find out. Maybe this will make Kristen try it. Maybe. I know I'm nodding over here right now. Are you doing something? Oh, good. I am. I'm using some of the pearls that you sent, Danielle. And I I asked about the two strand thing because I actually crimped it as just one strand, but I decided to give it a try and see what happens. And it is working. It's just not, it's just a little bit smaller. Like it, um, I think the two strand is a little bit nicer, but but it is working as one strand. Oh, I'm curious to see how that works. Because how are you getting it, like yanking it down to the bead? I am just tugging. I'm just moving. I'm actually using a bent nose plier and I'm holding it above the knot and like tugging it. Once I get close. I need to get you some beading tweezers. I think I have the pair that um, Danielle is using somewhere, but I have a feeling it got covered in glue. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I had a glue accident and I think those tweezers were in the uh <laughs> were in the oh, accident. No. <laughs> I'm gonna um move over to my camera. You guys, I just knotted that whole bracelet. Oh, 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 yeah. Yeah. oh wow. That's awesome. I can't believe it. Um we also have Softlex in black and white. Oh. So those may be really good options for neutrals. Um, that you're looking for to add to your design. I'm gonna string my last bead. I'm gonna grab a two by two millimeter softlex crimp tube. You can see I have a lot of extra wire because I just started doing this. So I've been using a lot of excess wire, probably a good extra foot. So two feet is probably more than enough. I think Danielle said 20 inches. Um, so I'd say at least um, at least 20 inches, maybe up to 24 inches would be for a bracelet would work well. Does that seem right, Danielle? It does, yeah. So I strung both wires through my two by two millimeter softwax tube in gold filled. So then I'm just gonna take just one wire into my toggle from our good friends at Tearcast and then string back into that crimp tube. And then I can just kind of cinch it, cinch it down. And Brenda is saying, that's how oh, I learned to knot pearls before these wonderful bead knotting devices were invented. So does that mean you used a tweezer and you did sort of this, this technique? Is that what you're talking about, Brenda? Go ahead, Sarah. Okay, I'm just sliding down and I'm leaving enough room that my toggle can move around really freely and comfortably. I'm gonna come in with those magical crimpers again and center and compress. And then I'm gonna take those four corners and I'm gonna compress and go around the whole thing, tightening it all down. I cannot believe I have worked for this company. I'm gonna give it a tug, make sure it's secure. <laughs> I've worked for this company for 22 years and I still learn new things with Softlex. Every single year. I mean, every year. <laughs> Whether you're doing kumihimo or you're doing macrame or knotting or knitting. I was just knitting last week or the week before, I can't remember. Um, it's just, it's amazing because it's so flexible, it's so strong, and it comes in so many different diameters and colors. It makes it really applicable for a lot of different things. And there we go. Yay. Yes. Yay. John, do you a wholesale only company? Um, yeah, if you want to buy from the warehouse, you need to be um, a wholesale customer. Okay. But if you're in the Toronto area, there's the John Veed outlet. And I have yet to get to go to this outlet. And when I do, I'm going to need a U-Haul van. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, is it amazing? <laughs> Okay, I'm going to come back to our faces so that you guys are forewarned. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Here, let's do one of these, baby. Um, yes, we will definitely need a U-Haul van. I have been in the outlet. It has a lot of very interesting, very unusual things because they are a third generation company. They've been around for so long and they've worked in a lot of different industries. Um, so that I think is what makes John Bead really incredible and different than a lot of other beading companies out there. Um, and especially in their outlets, they just have some like really unusual things, you know, that have stuck around for years that are special and, and really fantastic. And then they're a huge dealer of Preciosa Crystal, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're um, an authorized partner. Oh, that's that's really wonderful. Um, so, how do you go, couple, Kristen? We have a couple of things here I just want to mention. Um, Brenda said, yes, yeah, she used the tweezers, and mm -hmm. that's what uh, she was talking about. But Karen says, now I know a way to restring my mother's pearls. And that just got me thinking yeah. how nice it is to be able to do this with soft flex wire because it is so strong stainless steel it's not going to have any issues with tearing you know kind of wearing down or issues in water or anything like that um mm -hmm. so it's a wonderful product to restring something important like your mother's pearls let's see if i can bring this up to you and, and a little back a little more back maybe little with your hand bit. in front oh let's wow see. that's better yeah so, so, good. so it came out good yeah. it got it gets a little bit wonky, I think, because um, I don't get the knot quite as as close as I think I would if I had the two strands. But yeah. when I put it on my wrist, you would be none the wiser. Like, right? Yeah, you know, really it'll pull a ton of time. Yeah. So I'm doing yeah. it. I ended up just doing it with the one strand and kind of do the overhand knot through, and then used. Um, my bent nose pliers, because that's the closest thing I had here, a tweezer would get it a little closer. So the tweezer would get it closer, of, yeah. That's part of the issue too, is the pliers have a pretty thick kind of end um, and then just kind of pulled that close and it worked. <laughs> it worked. 019? Are you using 019? Yeah, I'm using 019 and it's the chrysoprase color. With oh, I couldn't even tell, it looks bone from here. With the, um, let me see if I have something else I can put behind it. Which color is, are these pearls? They are they look like iridescent they hazelnut. Really? Is that what that is? That's oh, what it says. So I, it's like a green, but it's a little on the bronzy green side. Pretty. Let me just see. I don't know if this will work, but. Oh, me, yeah. Oh, so that's pretty good for your first attempt. Yeah. And doing it in your own unique way, of course. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> definitely resourceful. That is definitely one of, my, one of my things. What do I have around to make this work with what I've got right now? <laughs> yeah, you're very good at that. And not following the directions in the beginning, I just crimped it with the one strand. And I was like, oh, I was supposed to have two, but I'll just oh, go with yeah. it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the fun of beating together and trying something new, you know, like it's the exploration. And then everybody out there watching gets to learn from all of us. Right. Right. Let's see, Kimberly Carrie Crawford is asking, we can buy many of these items from your Etsy store though, right, Danielle? I have some, a few things. It's just a, it, it kind of hit or miss. I sell out a lot, so. <laughs> so I, I maybe always... take, take an eye on Danielle's Etsy store. Do, do they just search for Danielle Wicks on Etsy? Or do you have a uh, store yeah. name? Um, I have, it's daniellewicks.etsy.com. Uh, and then I have a website that you can get to it through. It's uh, daniellewicksjewelry.com. Okay. I see Thomas just posted a link. Tell me if that's the right link or not. <laughs> Let's see here. I'll post it up here so you can see it. Danny, 
Mm. Oh, maybe he just took it down. Oh, no, it is. <laughs> Danny Fair W221. Oh, Etsy. that's actually, um, that's my, that's one of my emails. <laughs> but it's just DanielleWicks.com. <laughs> okay. So maybe post that one in there, Thomas. Okay. Um, oh, gosh. Becky, that's pretty. These are so pretty. And if oh, I didn't ahead. say it, if I didn't say it in the beginning, these are all from um, Danielle from John B. These were eight millimeter that I was using. So just so that everyone knows the size. Becky's mentioning that her tweezers are kind of flexible. So when she tries to pick up beads with them, the middle of the tweezers bend and then it drops mm -hmm. the bead. That does not sound helpful. No. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe those tweezers are for some, some other reason, not for bead picking up, I guess. Oh, maybe they're <laughs> nodding tweezers. I haven't even tried to pick up a bead with, oh, no, you can pick up beads with these. Let me, oh yeah, my camera's there. This works pretty Hold on, well. Do you want me to put you on? There we go. Sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, that if, if that's something you want to do. I was just, um, the soft flex goes through the beads so easily and these have such large holes. I just picked them up with my fingers um, and that worked really well. Well, this was such a joy to spend some time with you uh, today, Danielle. Um, it's been really lovely to get to know you a little better and I love this technique. Um, which I know is not unique to you, but you are the person that showed it to me with the light bulb moment. So I will always attribute it to you now. <laughs> um, so thank you for that. And um, I'm going to just nod up like everything I can get my hands on. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Somebody was saying Somebody. earlier, Danielle, that they caught a video with you talking about selling and what what works, what doesn't. I can't remember where that <laughs> comment was, but was that something you just did recently? Yeah, yeah, we've done a couple. It's a, it's a series that I'm doing with Michael Stores to help people who want to resell their jewelry with ideas, tips, tricks, packaging, displaying um, platforms and designs that sell. So awesome, that's fun. super helpful. So is it are like all a, of those videos on the Michaels website or our YouTube channel? Where do people find those videos? They are, yeah, they're on Michaels YouTube. Uh, they're on michaels.com slash classes as well. You can find them there. Or you can go to blog.johnbead.com and we have all of our Michaels classes um, listed there as well. Uh -huh. Perfect. Plus you get to see all the John Bead stuff there too. So you get a double awesome. whammy if you go to the John B blog. For sure, lots of tutorials and a lot of stuff that, um, you know, we, that we've done just for John B is there. So you can find a lot of treasures there. A couple well, of people are saying they watched it and it was very informative. I would think so. Oh. That sounds like a great series. You're oh, a wonderful you. teacher, Danielle. I've caught a couple of your videos. You're a really wonderful teacher. So everyone should keep an eye out for where they can learn from Danielle because I think you will really enjoy it. Oh, that's an awesome compliment. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one last thing before we go, it was Kristen's birthday earlier this week. And <laughs> although I told her over the phone and I sent flowers, because that's how special and important she is, Oh, I also beautiful flowers. <laughs> a happy birthday. Thank you. Um, Thank and you. I'm off. My my little girl just turned seven today. And so oh. she, her favorite meal is a pot pie, which, of course, it's like 85 degrees today. <laughs> and this is what she wants on her birthday every year. And so I'm going to go sweat over the stove and make a home <laughs> pot pie. <laughs> for for her um and um but that will make oh. her feel special so that's all that matters right yes <laughs> i was gonna say that's a leo for you this is what i love and however you figure it out you figure it out. <laughs> yeah well, she's the only one in the house that's vegetarian too so i have to make a vegetarian oh. one and then a chicken one <laughs> <laughs> it's like the production, but right. uh, well worth it Aww. for her to feel special. So, oh, that's so that's nice to do. Um, thank you for being here today with us, Danielle. And Thanks it is just me. 
really a joy I'm, to get to know you. Yeah, really nice. And I'm so excited to have a new knot to try in my little knotting mm -hmm. repertoire. This is going to be great. Yeah, oh, I think great. it's going to be wonderful. I'm really excited about exploring it some more and thinking about how to use it and maybe some earrings or some tassels. And I think there's a lot of different options that I haven't gotten to yet that are gonna be really cool. So thanks yeah. for kickstarting it. And um, if you wanna learn more about John B, you can go to their website, which is? Uh, JohnB.com. Awesome. And then if you wanna learn more about Danielle Wicks, you can go to her website as well, I assume. Yeah, Which yeah. is? It's DanielleWicksJewelry.com. Perfect. And then, of course, <laughs> if you want anything from us, we loaded uh, 18 styles. Wasn't it? Oh, 11 styles, 18 different strands of check glass today. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and we did add the beading tweezers because I'm probably going to be using these all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you can get those from us as well. And uh, you can do that at Softlex company.com and um thank you for being here today danielle and we are gonna mm -hmm. head out now